cancer care fundraiser. Thought that was gonna go over better earlier, but uh, that's all right. That was ma mainly for me. Uh, no, it's uh, it's good to be here. I always enjoy performing at Pulse nightclub. It's uh, they got chairs here and stuff. It doesn't look like a regular nightclub tonight. Although I still feel like somebody over here probably sells cocaine. And it's like, uh, I'll meet you in the bathroom at ten. Uh, just kidding. I don't do that anymore. I, uh, I've been having a little bit of trouble uh, with women lately. Uh, I've been single for a, just a little while. I don't really know how long, maybe like two years. Who's counting, right? And, uh, let me ask, has anybody, anybody here tried the online dating thing? <laughs> me and one girl who put her hand up over there. <laughs> We're the only losers in here, right? <laughs> I, uh, I went on the Plenty of Fish site, mainly because it's free. This is Winnipeg. Uh, I'll tell you, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna delete my account right away though, because uh, I had a little bit of a bad experience, and I was thinking about what Plenty of Fish and online dating is like. And it's, essentially, it's just you're going on a blind date, except for you don't have a friend that's setting you up. Wherein. Plenty of fish is essentially your really shitty friend who sets you up for a failure every time. Uh, like if Plenty of Fish were a real guy, he'd be the guy you don't pass out around because he draws penises on your face. Uh, Plenty of Fish is the guy that's like, oh yeah man, I set you up with this really, really good looking girl. She kind of looks like uh, Mila Kunis. And you're like, oh, right on. And then you get to her apartment and she looks more like John Goodman. <laughs> and the only reason I decided to try out online dating is because, like, I've been sober for two years, and, uh, you should get an applause there, but, uh, whatever. Good thing you guys knew to do that, because I would have drank tonight if you didn't, so. <laughs> and it would have been this lady's fault. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I've been sober for two years, and it's it's kind of strange to me trying to pick up women in a bar now. Like I'm in a bar quite a bit doing comedy, but I don't know how to like engage that conversation anymore because I can't really buy them drinks because like I'm not drinking, so it's a little creepy, you know. Like I meet a girl like, hey, my name's Chad. I don't drink, but I'll get you fucking hammered tonight. <laughs> Right? And my buddy, my buddy's like, well, why don't you like find a find an angle to work with these ladies? And like, what kind of angles do I have as a sober guy? You know what I mean? Like, I find the most messed up drunk girl in the bar, like, pull her to the side, and talk to her about the dangers of alcoholism, and <laughs> take her home and sober her up for 28 days. <laughs> That's a long time to wait. Don't you think? <laughs> But he's like, well, why don't you make up like a, a cool story is why you don't drink. And I'm like, eh, I don't really want to lie my way into a girl's bedroom. Yeah, I do. Uh, but no, and he's like, well, why don't you tell her the truth then? I'm like, the truth, yeah. Oh, the truth. That always works. Like, meet a girl, like, hey, I'm Chad. I'm 25. I don't really have that great of a job. Uh, I share a house with three of my friends. We're not the cleanliest guys. Um, I barely graduated grade 12 this year at the age of 25. But I got that GED! Woo! Oh yeah, also, uh, I don't drink because I have a terrible allergy to alcohol. Yeah, every time I drink, I break out with cocaine and ecstasy. It's the weirdest thing. You want to come meet my roommates now? And I am, like, I'm sober, and I'm also Aboriginal. And if that surprises you, you're probably racist. <laughs> and that's, all, that's all right, because I've had my fair share of racism in my time. Like, last 
last year when we when we got the news the jets are coming back i had this construction job and i just get off got off work i'm standing at portage in maryland at a bus stop and uh, i was like super dirty you know i was working and my jeans were ripped up and this truck of five guys pulls up the one guy rolls his window down and he's like hey bro do you like the jets i was like oh yeah man the jets it's awesome he's like cool 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 and then the light turns green and he looks at me again and goes, What oh, are no fucking Indians like the Jets, you dirty spit? And I was like, hey, but wait, what? <laughs> Did he call me two races at one time? <laughs> I've heard of covering all angles, but... And the thing that really got me was that there was five guys in the truck and I was by myself at the bus stop. And they waited for the green light to say something. <laughs> It's like, he, he was gonna say something and then his buddy's like, no, no, bro, that Mexican Indian's pretty dirty. <laughs> we might get stabbed. <laughs> so, sometimes I like, to, I like to look at stereotypes and see like where they're right and where they're wrong. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Like, for instance, a lot of black people will say that white men can't dance. I don't really think that's necessarily true. I just don't think they can dance to black music. You know what I mean? Like, like you'll never see your host, Kurt Berger, doing a crip walk really good. But you see, if you see him at a social, he can do the chicken dance like a mother. <laughs> and or here's another one. A lot, of, a lot of white folks say that aboriginals like to steal bikes. I think it's necessarily true. I just think most of us are sick of walking for the last 20 years, so. <laughs> Maybe if there were buffalo around still, we'd ride them, but. <laughs> some settlers way back nearly drove into extinction, so. Essentially, it's like you're stealing your own bikes, white people. <laughs> like to gamble now and then here? We like to go to the casino once in a while? Yeah, put your hand up, everyone can hear that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I like to gamble once in a while, but I, I set a limit for myself. You know what I mean? I go in there with, I'm like, oh, I'll spend $60 on blackjack. If I lose, I'll go home. And uh, I just have a good time. Some people might say I play a little recklessly, but I don't really care. Uh, but this one time I'm sitting at the blackjack table and there's like, it was a full table. And there was this old guy beside me, and every time I like was playing recklessly, I noticed he was getting really mad. And then this one time, I took I took a lot of cards to try to make twenty one because that's the game. And then everyone at the table ended up losing. And the old man looks at me. He's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I was like, uh, "Playing playing blackjack, I think." And he's like, "Do you think this is a fucking game?" <laughs> Yes. And even if I was serious about this, I'm here for me. This is not a team sport, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care about this guy. But seriously, guys, gambling is a serious problem that some people have, and uh, it's not really a laughing matter. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, maybe just stay out of the casino when I'm there, because I like to have fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding guys, seriously. Gambling is a serious problem for some people and uh, maybe give them an allowance or something. <laughs> Limit the money you give them. No, all jokes aside, gambling is a serious problem for some people and we should kill them. <laughs> Thanks, I've been Chad Anderson.